Liam Harrison tightened his grip on the railing as the galactic endeavor shuddered violently. The lights flickered, casting eerie shadows across the control room. Alien crew members rushed to their stations, their usually calm demeanors shattered by the sudden crisis. Status report, Commander Zoran's voice boomed, his four eyes narrowing with concern. All advanced systems are down, Commander, reported Dr. Lyron, the ship's chief scientist. We're trapped in the energy field, and our power reserves are depleting rapidly. Liam's mind raced. His training as an engineer had prepared him for many emergencies, but this, this was different. The energy field was unlike anything he'd ever encountered. It defied all known principles of physics and technology. We need a solution, and fast. Commander Zorn declared, turning to his crew, suggestions? As the alien crew exchanged anxious glances, Liam hesitated. He knew his idea was unconventional, but it might be their only chance. Commander, he began, stepping forward. What if we bypass the advanced systems and use basic engineering principles? Sometimes, the simplest solutions can be the most effective. Commander Zoran's eyes flashed with skepticism. A primitive approach? We're dealing with advanced technology here, human. We don't have time for experiments. Liam felt the weight of the crew's stares. Doubt gnawed at him, but he held his ground. I understand, sir. But our advanced systems are failing us. We need to think outside the box. Before Zoran could respond, K. Ariel, the elder engineer, spoke up. The human might have a point, Commander. Sometimes, the old ways can offer new insights. Zoran hesitated, then nodded curtly. Very well, Harrison. You have one hour. Prove your theory. With a mixture of relief and apprehension, Liam set to work. He knew the odds were against him, but he also knew that ingenuity often emerged in the face of adversity. As he gathered materials and began his repairs, he couldn't shake the feeling that this was just the beginning of an even greater challenge. The control room buzzed with tension. Liam worked quickly, his hands moving with practiced precision. He stripped wires, bypassed circuits, and fashioned makeshift connections using the most basic tools available. K. E. Ryle watched him intently, occasionally offering a nod of approval or a word of advice. You remind me of our early engineers, K. Reel said, his voice a low rumble. They relied on intuition and resourcefulness, not just technology. Liam smiled briefly. Let's hope that's enough. Minutes ticked by, and the atmosphere grew increasingly tense. The ship's lights continued to flicker, and the hum of life support systems became erratic. Liam felt the pressure mounting, every second a reminder of the crew's dwindling chances. Suddenly, a panel sparked to life. Liam's heart leaped. I've got partial power to the navigation controls, he called out. Commander Zoran's eyes widened. Good work, Harrison. Can you get us out of this field? I'm trying, Liam replied, his fingers flying over the controls. He rerouted power, bypassing damaged systems. The ship trembled again, but this time it felt different like a beast awakening from slumber. Just as hope began to take root, an alarm blared. Warning! Critical systems failure imminent, the automated voice intoned. Liam's heart sank. He glanced at K. Reel, who nodded grimly. There's a secondary power junction in the maintenance bay. It might give us the boost we need. Without hesitation, Liam grabbed his toolkit and headed for the maintenance bay. The narrow corridors felt claustrophobic, the ship's groans echoing ominously. He reached the bay and found the junction box. Opening it, he saw the extent of the damage wires were frayed, circuits burned. He worked methodically, stripping and reconnecting wires, bypassing burnt-out circuits. Sweat dripped down his face as he focused, the weight of the crew's survival pressing on him. Finally, he made the last connection and held his breath. The ship hummed, then roared to life. Lights brightened, systems stabilized, and the oppressive energy field began to dissipate. Liam's shoulders sagged with relief. Back in the control room, Commander Zoran met Liam with a rare smile. Well done, Harrison. You've given us a fighting chance. The crew cheered, a mix of alien languages and human voices blending in a cacophony of relief and joy. Liam felt a swell of pride. He had done it against all odds. He had found a solution. But as the ship began to navigate out of the energy field, 
a new alert flashed on the main screen. Liam's heart skipped a beat. Commander, we're not out of the woods yet. There's something else out there. Commander Zorin's smile faded. What do you mean? Liam pointed to the screen. Another anomaly, larger than the first. It's directly in our path. The room fell silent. Commander Zoran turned to his crew, determination in his eyes. Prepare for the unknown. Harrison, we may need your ingenuity again. Liam stood at the helm of the galactic endeavor, his mind still racing from the events of the previous hours. The ship had narrowly escaped the energy field, but the new anomaly loomed ahead like a dark omen. He knew their troubles were far from over. Commander Zoran, Liam called out, his voice steady despite the tension. I need access to the ship's schematics and data on the anomaly. We must understand what we're dealing with. Commander Zoran nodded, signaling Dr. Liren. The alien scientist's multiple hands moved swiftly over the console, projecting a holographic display of the ship and the surrounding space. The anomaly appears to be a spatial distortion, Dr. Liren explained. It's creating gravitational waves that are disrupting our systems. Standard navigation protocols won't work. Liam studied the hologram, his mind working through possible solutions. If we can stabilize the ship's core systems, we might be able to create a counterwave to neutralize the distortion. Zoran's eyes narrowed thoughtfully. A risky proposition, but it might be our only option. What do you need? Time and assistance, Liam replied. I'll need a team to help with the manual adjustments and another to monitor the core's output. Commander Zoran barked orders and the crew sprang into action. K. Rill joined Liam, his calm presence a steadying force. As they moved through the corridors, K. Rill spoke quietly. You have a natural gift for thinking on your feet, Liam. It's a quality not often seen among the crew. Liam gave a small smile. Necessity is the mother of invention, they say. I just hope my ideas hold up. They reached the engine room, where the core thrummed with unstable energy. Liam directed his team, assigning tasks with precision. K. Rill, monitor the energy levels. Jara, handle the power distribution. I'll work on realigning the stabilizers. As they worked, the tension in the room was palpable. Every adjustment, every flicker of the core's light, seemed to echo the stakes of their mission. Liam's hands moved deftly, his focus unwavering. He could feel the eyes of the crew on him, their hopes pinned on his success. Minutes turned into hours as they labored. Sweat dripped down Liam's forehead, but he ignored it, driven by the urgency of their situation. Finally, the core's unstable hum began to smooth into a steady rhythm. Carol's voice broke the silence. Energy levels are stabilizing, Liam. The core's output is evening out. A wave of relief washed over the crew. Liam allowed himself a moment to breathe before turning his attention back to the main control room. They still needed to tackle the spatial distortion. Let's test the counterwave theory, Liam said, his voice filled with cautious optimism. Jara, prepare to synchronize the core's output with the ship's external sensors. As the crew executed his commands, Liam felt a renewed sense of hope. The ship's systems began to align, creating a harmonious energy field that extended outward. Activating counterwave, Jara announced. The ship vibrated as the energy field met the anomaly. For a tense moment, nothing happened. Then, the anomaly began to waver. The gravitational distortions lessened, and the ship's system stabilized further. A cheer went up among the crew, but Liam knew they weren't safe yet. We've managed to weaken the distortion, Liam said, but we need to navigate through it carefully. Commander, I'll need you to steer the ship manually. Our sensors can guide you but precision is crucial. Commander Zoran took the helm, his expression one of fierce determination. You heard him, everyone. This is it, steady and precise. Liam and Kay Ryle monitored the sensors, guiding Zoran through the treacherous space. Each movement required meticulous coordination, a dance of technology and intuition. The ship groaned under the strain, but they pressed on. Suddenly, alarms blared. We've hit a dense pocket of the anomaly, Jara shouted. Stabilizers are failing. Liam's heart pounded. We need to redistribute power again. K. Rill, divert all non-essential energy to the stabilizers. 
Jara, maintain the counterwave frequency. The ship shuddered violently. Liam felt a surge of fear but pushed it aside, focusing on the task at hand. Almost there, he muttered, willing the ship to hold together. With a final, gut-wrenching lurch, the galactic endeavor broke free of the anomaly. The sensors cleared and the ship floated in calm space once more. The crew erupted into cheers, their relief palpable. Commander Zoran turned to Liam, his expression unreadable. You've done it again, Harrison. We owe you our lives. Liam nodded, exhaustion washing over him. Just doing my job, Commander. Liam Harrison took a moment to savor the triumph. The galactic endeavor had successfully navigated the treacherous anomaly, and the crew's morale was at an all-time high. But the reprieve was short-lived. An urgent call came through from the ship's security officer, Lieutenant Rax. Commander Zoran, we have an issue in the cargo bay. An unidentified object has materialized within our secured area. Commander Zoran's expression hardened. Harrison, with me. Let's see what we're dealing with. As they made their way to the cargo bay, Liam couldn't shake a sense of foreboding. The ship had just escaped one peril, only to face another. When they arrived, the sight that greeted them was unexpected. A large, crystalline structure pulsed with a faint, otherworldly glow in the center of the cargo bay. What in the universe is that? Liam whispered, his eyes wide with astonishment. Dr. Liren scanned the object with her multifunctional device. It's composed of elements unknown to our databases. It seems to be emitting a low-frequency signal. Zoran's eyes narrowed. Is it dangerous? Liren hesitated. It's hard to say without further analysis. However, we must proceed with caution. Liam approached the crystal. His engineer's curiosity peaked. He noticed intricate patterns on its surface, resembling ancient runes. Could this be some kind of message or communication device? Zoran nodded. Possibly. Let's secure the area and set up a quarantine. We need to ensure it poses no threat to the ship or crew. As the crew worked to secure the cargo bay, Liam's mind raced with possibilities. The crystal was unlike anything he'd ever seen, and its sudden appearance was a mystery that demanded investigation. Hours later, Liam found himself back in the engineering lab, studying the data gathered from the crystal. His thoughts were interrupted by Kay Ryle, who entered with a grave expression. Liam, we have another problem. The core's stabilization is fluctuating again. The anomaly might have caused more damage than we realized. Liam sighed, fatigue creeping into his bones. We need to run a full diagnostic. If the core fails, we're back to square one. As they began the diagnostic, the ship trembled slightly, a reminder of the ever-present danger. The readings confirmed their fears, the core's integrity was compromised. They had limited time to implement a solution. We need to reinforce the core's containment field, Liam decided. It's our best shot at maintaining stability. Carol nodded. I'll assist. We must work quickly. Together, they moved through the labyrinthine corridors to the core chamber. The ship's pulse was erratic, the vibrations a constant reminder of their precarious situation. When they reached the chamber, Liam quickly set to work, adjusting the containment field parameters. Keep an eye on the energy output, Liam instructed Kay Ryle as he maneuvered through the complex circuitry. As the adjustments progressed, the ship's tremors intensified. Alarms blared, signaling critical levels of instability. Liam worked faster, his hands moving with precision despite the urgency. Suddenly, a power surge sent sparks flying. Liam cursed under his breath, his mind racing to recalibrate the system. We're losing containment. Divert all auxiliary power to the core. Carol complied his calm demeanor a stark contrast to the chaotic environment. Power diverted, containment fields stabilizing. Just as hope began to blossom, the ship shuddered violently. A loud crack echoed through the chamber, followed by the sound of rushing air. We have a breach. Kay, Rural shouted. Containment is failing. Liam's mind raced. They needed a solution, and fast. Kay, Rill, seal the breach manually. I'll handle the field stabilization. As K. Rel moved to seal the breach, Liam focused on rerouting power. His hands flew over the controls, the tension mounting with each passing second. 
The room was filled with the sounds of alarms and the hiss of escaping air. With a final adjustment, the containment field stabilized. The ship's tremors lessened, and the alarms silenced. Liam let out a breath he didn't realize he'd been holding. Carol, how's the breach? He called out. Sealed, K. Rill replied, though his voice carried a note of exhaustion. We're secure, for now. Relief washed over Liam. They had managed to avert another crisis, but the underlying issues remained. The ship was still in a delicate state, and the mysterious crystal in the cargo bay was an enigma yet to be solved. Back in the control room, Commander Zorin greeted them with a nod. Good work. The core is stable, but we can't afford any more surprises. Liam agreed. We need to understand the crystal and its purpose. It might be the key to preventing further disruptions. Dr. Liren stepped forward. I've been analyzing the signal. It appears to be a form of communication. If we can decode it, we might gain insight into its origin and purpose. Liam's eyes lit up with curiosity. Let's get to work then. The answers we need might be right in front of us. The air in the control room of the Galactic Endeavor was thick with tension. Liam Harrison, Commander Zoran, Dr. Liren, and Kay Rill were gathered around the central console where the mysterious crystal's holographic projection shimmered. We need to decode the signal this crystal is emitting, Dr. Lyron said, her voice steady despite the uncertainty. It could hold the key to understanding the anomaly and stabilizing our systems permanently. Liam nodded, his mind racing. The crystal had already caused enough disruption, and he was determined to uncover its secrets. Let's start by analyzing the patterns in the signal. There might be a recognizable code or language. As they worked, the ship's usual hum seemed louder an ever-present reminder of their precarious situation. Liam's fingers flew over the controls, his eyes scanning for any anomalies in the data. Beside him, K. Ryle and Dr. Liren provided support, their combined expertise forming a formidable team. Hours passed, and frustration began to set in. The signal was complex, layered with nuances that defied their attempts at decryption. Just as Liam was about to suggest a break, K. Ryle's eyes widened. I think I've found something, he said, his voice tinged with excitement. There's a repeating sequence here, almost like a mathematical formula. Liam leaned closer, scrutinizing the data. You're right. If we can isolate this sequence and apply a translation algorithm, we might be able to decode the message. Commander Zorin watched intently. Do it. We need answers. Liam and Kay Rill set to work, applying various algorithms to the sequence. It was a meticulous process, but gradually, the garbled signal began to take shape. Words and phrases emerged, revealing a message hidden within the crystal. It's a warning, Dr. Liren said, her voice barely above a whisper. The crystal is a beacon, sent by an ancient civilization. They encountered the same anomaly and left this message as a guide for those who followed. Liam's heart pounded. What does it say? Dr. Liren read aloud translating the alien script. Beware the distortion. It is a tear in the fabric of space-time, a rift that consumes energy and matter. To stabilize it, one must create a harmonic resonance using the crystal's core. A harmonic resonance, Liam repeated, his mind racing. We can use the ship's systems to amplify the crystal's frequency. If we synchronize it with the core's output, we might be able to seal the rift. Commander Zorin's eyes gleamed with determination. You have your orders. Make it happen. The crew sprang into action, moving with a sense of purpose that belied their exhaustion. Liam led the effort, coordinating the modifications to the ship's systems. As they worked, the ship's tremors grew more pronounced, a stark reminder of the urgency of their task. In the engineering bay, Liam and Kay Reel connected the crystal to the ship's core wiring it into the primary power grid. The crystal pulsed with energy, its glow intensifying as it synced with the ship systems. Prepare to activate the harmonic resonance, Liam instructed, his voice calm despite the stakes. K. Rill, monitor the power levels. Dr. Liren, keep an eye on the signal stability. As they initiated the sequence, the ship shuddered violently. Lights flickered and alarms blared, but the crew remained focused. The crystal's glow brightened, casting an ethereal light across the room. The resonance is building, K. Real reported. 
Power levels are holding steady. Liam watched the readings intently. We need to maintain this frequency. Any fluctuation could destabilize the entire process. Minutes felt like hours as they held their breath, watching the crystal's energy pulse in sync with the ship's core. The ship groaned under the strain, but the resonance held. Suddenly, the ship lurched. We're losing stability, Dr. Liren shouted. The resonance is fluctuating. 